over the last several lessons, we've been learning about the graphs of sine and cosine, which we have right here. Sine and cosine have amplitude, which is the distance from the center line to the peak. They have peaks, they have troughs, they kind of wave up and down. They have an amplitude, they have a period, and they have a frequency. which is the reciprocal of a period. So that's what sine and cosine look like, but you'll notice that we didn't talk about tangent, secant, cosecant, or cotangent. So what, what's going on with those guys? That's what we're gonna learn about today. Ooh. Oh, another good thing that happened while I was gone was I went swimming. The hotel I was staying at in Fulbrook had an indoor pool and there was no, no one else there, so. so me and my lady were able to swim without needing to, like, also try to wear pants. It was nice. Anyway, we're vaccinated, of course, so it doesn't really matter that much. So, time. Anyway. Okay. So today we're going, we're going to learn about the graphs of tangent and cotangent. I'm hoping that we'll also be able to get to uh, secant and cosecant, but we'll, we'll have to see if that happens. It really depends on, um, uh, I'll try to get through as much as I can. Our objective today is that students will be able graph tangent no tangent oof I'm not sure where I was had a bowl of cereal I came to work and I like here have a donut and I'm like oh, okay okay that's it okay so we're going to start we're going to start by uh, looking at the graphs by just going we're going to start by just going straight to Desmos looking at the graph of tangent and then we're going to start from that graph we're going to work back and try to understand why it behaves the way it does okay Okay, now you guys can see my uh, screen, right? You can see the Desmo stuff? Yeah. Great. So, just really quickly, here's sine of x. Here's cosine of x. Okay, so what does tangent look like? Oh, oh my goodness. 
What is this? Okay, so tangent behaves rather oddly, doesn't it? It doesn't look at all like the it doesn't look at all like the waves of sine and cosine. What the heck is going on here? Why this freaky graph? Well, let's just try to make it, let's try to try to get an understanding of what's going on here. So first of all, it looks like it passes through zeros or it crosses the x-axis. So it's what, so y, it's zeros. It looks like it has zeros at multiples of pi. So when you plug in a multiple of pi, tangent will spit out a zero, which is something that it has in common with sine. They both pass through zero at multiples, when you plug in multiples of pi. Okay, so that's a similarity right there. So it's not quite as horribly different as it looks. Another thing is that just like sine and cosine, it is periodic. Sine repeats itself over time. So does cosine. So they're both periodic. And so is tangent. Tangent consists of, you know, each of these, uh, each of these segments that repeats itself over and over. So just like sine and cosine, it is periodic. But it has something else going on. It also, if I zoom out a little bit, it also clearly has these vertical asymptotes. Kind of. Yeah. Hmm. So let's see. It looks like it, okay, so if it repeats itself every pi, then I guess that it would have a vertical asymptotes every. At uh, half pi, pi, oops, 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 x equals pi, yeah, 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 yeah. So it looks like it has vertical asymptotes at y equals pi over 2. And note that it has these vertical asymptotes when cosine is 0. So what's going on here? Understand the behavior. Of tangent. You should go back to the OG definitions. Now, if we have a triangle, <laughs> our angle, there's the opposite, there's the, there's the, uh, the, 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 we know that sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine of theta the adjacent over the hypotenuse and tangent is 
is the opposite divided by the adjacent. By the way, you can remember these with a handy mnemonic phrase or mnemonic word. Sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Their powers combine to Catchy word, so Katoa. Okay. So, now these are the original definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, I'd like you to note something. If we take sine and divide it by cosine, that will give us, I need to raise the bullet there. So if we take sine and divide it by cosine, then that will mean that we'll have the opposite over a hypotenuse divided by the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now that means that these hypotenuses cancel out and we're left with the opposite over the adjacent, which this which is tangent. So another way that we could write tan of theta is sine over cosine. And this is where we can explain a lot of the behavior of tangent. Now, will anyone yell at me if we if I take this away and move on to the next board? Any yelling? No yelling? All right.
So, so tan of theta over cosine, or, or, what am I doing? So tan being sine over cosine explains tangents odd behavior. It has vertical asymptotes when cosine of theta equals zero. Because the function's value blows up, and the denominator gets very small. Now if we go back to our unit circle, cosine is zero at pi over two, 3 pi, 3 pi over 2, then if we go around again at 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, 11 pi over 2, and so on. This also means that tangent undefined with the input is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and so on. Odd multiples I have. Now, with, now because zero divided by anything is zero, that also means that it's going to have zeros when sine of theta is zero. So. When I say it has zeros, I mean places where it crosses the line. So inputs of zero pi, pi. 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so
Fair enough? So does this make sense? Do, do these various arguments for why tangent looks the way it does make sense to you? Well, nobody's saying they're confused, so I'll assume that things are mostly sensible here. Okay. Now, another thing that we'll look at, another thing that we'll look at with tangent before, before we uh, move on to cotangent is, uh, you know, Last time we looked at transformations of sine and cosine. And we'll now, okay, okay so a couple, yeah. Let's just go ahead and go over to the graph before I tie my tongue up any further. Okay. Okay. So last time, The last time we were learning about transformations of sine, that we can change the amplitude of sine, change the period of sine, vertical shift, horizontal shift. Now we can still apply the same transformations to a tangent. H V V slightly reach them. Now we can perform the same transformations. We can apply the same transformations to tangent. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can give tangent a vertical shift by changing the. Okay, hold up, let me set this to zero. We can still give tangent a vertical shift, stretch it up, or if it, the vertical shift is less than one, squish it down, flip it upside down if it's negative. So we can still give it a vertical shift, although we do not say it has an amplitude. An amplitude specifically is the height of each of each wave, and each of these segments goes up to infinity. So it doesn't make sense to give it an amplitude, but we can give it a vertical shift. Now we can change the period again by changing big to it closer together, make it small to stretch them further apart. If it's negative, it flips upside down, which is not a guarantee. Cosine is negative. We can give horizontal shifts and vertical shifts. Oh, that's kind of difficult to look at. Okay. So the transformations vertical stretches and so forth. Work just like they do in sign.
not a problem. Okay, will anyone, so the transformations all work the same way as always. Now, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay. Okay. What about cotangent? Well, let's go ahead and go back to Desmos and let's see what the behavior of cotangent is like. Cotangent is abbreviated COD, so cotangent of X. Oh, well, that looks familiar. It looks an awful lot like tangent, doesn't it? The difference is that tangent increases across each of its intervals, whereas tangent is decreasing. Now this makes a lot of sense. Remember that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which means that tangent, which means that cotangent is cosine over sine instead of tangents sine over cosine. Let me graph it here. Cosine divided by sine gives us tan gives us tan uh, cotangent. So, now this means that cotangent will have its vertical asymptotes when sine crosses the x-axis. And cotangent will have its zeros at the same places that cosine does. So, so cotangent and tangent behave very similarly. Hmm. Sorry. Okay. 
So if we recall, that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. <clears throat> Ergo. cotangent of theta would be cosine over sine. Cotangent has zeros when cosine of theta equals zero. So when theta is pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Oh. It has asymptotes. It has vertical asymptotes when uh, When sine of theta is zero. So when so it has its asymptotes when theta is zero, pi, two pi, three pi, and so forth. Now, a few more things to note before we move on. It looks like we're making good time, so we should be able to take a look at cosecant delightfully. Now, all the all the same transformations. The cotangent. I'm not going to bother showing them in Desmos, but all the same transformations. All the same transformations apply. Also, Go back to the graph for just a second here. Note that cotangent is always decreasing. Note that cotangent is decreasing along its along the entire x-axis. Or for that, note that cotangent is always going down. And tangent is always going up. So as I walk left to right, cotangent is going down and tangent is going up.
Hmm. Okay. The one who yell at me if I take this away? He says, ergo. Ergo, meaning therefore, but it's fewer letters. So it's that. All right. No yelling. Okay, now let's try to understand cosecant and secant. So first, let's just remember what secant and cosecant are. So, so uh, cosecant, CSC, is the reciprocal of sine. It's one over sine. Secant is one over cosine. Yeah, I know. Part of your part of you part of one's brain feels like that cosecant should be one over cosine. But no, it does not work the way that they're not named the way in a intuitive sense. Cosecant is one over sine, secant is one over cosine. Anyway, so it it follows then that. We should be able to figure out some of the properties of these graphs just from looking at these equations here. So cosecant is some sine, well, well uh, sine being the y value on the, as we go around the unit circle, sine sometimes has uh, values of zero, doesn't it? Which means that this denominator will sometimes be zero and at those places we'll see a vertical asymptote. So we should see vertical asymptotes at zero, at pi, at two pi, at three pi, at four pi, and so on. Now, sine will sum for angles between zero and 90, sine gives us some fraction that comes out to something less than one. A half is less than one, or square root of three is less than one. So what this means is that when we take the reciprocal of something that is less than one, say one half, we get something greater than one, two over one. So whereas sine always varies between zero and one, or negative, or, or negative one and one, cosecant is always gonna be the reciprocal of that, so it's gonna vary between blowing up to infinity and numbers that are greater than one, with its smallest number being the reciprocal of one, which is one. Okay, let's take a look at the graph. I know that sounded just like a lot of words, but it will make more sense when we get to it. Okay. Okay. So what does cosecant look like? Rather odd looking graph, isn't it? It's got all these, uh, these it's got these like thumbs that are protruding down. 
Now let's compare it to the thing it comes from. Remember that cosecant is the reciprocal sine. So when sine is when sine gives us a value of one, that means that the value of cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of one, which is one. So cosecant touches sine when sine's val value is one. And so cosecant touches the piece sine. Also note that we have these vertical asymptotes when sine's value is zero. Now secant and cosine work exactly the same way. Secant, it can reach down and touch the peak of cosine. So it touch the peaks and troughs of cosine and it has vertical asymptotes and the value of cosine is zero. So we can pretty clearly see the pattern that's going on. We're a little low on time, so I'm gonna. So, Secant and cosecant both vary in value from negative infinity to negative one and one to infinity. Oh, seconds. As vertical asymptotes when the sine of theta equals zero. And the cosecant of theta equals one. And sine of theta equals one. And secant works the same way for cosine. Hmm. All right. And they both look like, you know, kind of reminds me of fingers. Okay, and that's all of the basic properties of tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant.
Oops. You don't really need it. Wait. Okay. So today we learned about Today we learned about tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. We learned when each of these functions has uh, has vertical asymptotes. We learned when these functions reach certain other critical values, and when they cross the x-axis in the terms of tangent and cotangent, and when they reach one in the case of secant and cosecant. All right, now I said we'll go ahead and leave off there for today. I don't think I'll give you guys a check for understanding today. I, as much as I would, as much as I would like to, well, check your understanding. I know that everybody is still a little, a little bit overwhelmed with work. So this afternoon, you can work on work on makeup work. So, I will see you guys tomorrow.